Joined now by former state treasurer Carrie Kennedy, who today announced that she is joining the Democratic field in the primary for governor. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Kyle. It's great to be here. I have to ask you about this campaign announcement. You declared your candidacy live on Facebook. You're driving down the road looking at some notes on the dashboard. This is Distracted Driving Awareness Month, after all. <laughs> Would you be comfortable with one of your kids driving and reading and making a video at the same time? So, Kyle, I only uh, drove about half a block. It looks longer than that on the video, but I was going so slowly it was only half a block, just about 300 yards. And we actually had people set up along the route to monitor anybody coming by. So it was safe. We put safety first. Gotcha. So what the folks were out there, I assume, because you understood that there is an element of danger in driving while reading and making a video at the same time. Well, I had the script memorized, so I wasn't really reading. I was paying attention to the road. Gotcha. Let's talk about some issues. Um, you're joining what looks to be a pretty crowded Democratic field. What is it that you feel that you bring to the race and would bring to the job that you don't see anywhere else in the field right now? Well, I bring 10 years of experience uh, helping lead the state of Colorado. Um, you know, our state is innovative and forward-looking and, and modern. We're really a model for the nation. And I've spent the last decade working at the as state treasurer and as the chief financial officer for the city of Denver, helping build one of the fastest growing and most innovative economies in the country. You were uh, in the office of state treasurer, uh, lost in 2010 to Walker Stapleton, who could be the Republican candidate for governor. Why should Democrats risk putting you up against somebody that you've already lost the statewide race to? Well, it's a different time and it's a different race. And I think I bring a vision for the state of Colorado that um, people are looking for. There's a lot, Colorado, we're so proud of our state, but there's a lot that we can do to really improve our public education system. We should have a public education system that matches the great strength of our economy. And we also can uh, do a lot more to make sure that we protect the Colorado that we all love. You know. Turns out a lot of people love Colorado as much as we do, and a lot of people have been moving here. And um, being thoughtful and bringing innovative uh, solutions to communities around the state to help them grow sustainably and to help us protect what we love here in Colorado, those are the things you're going to hear me focusing on in this race. To better fund public education, what type of constitutional unwinding would be necessary? So, you know, I started my career helping increase funding for public education in Colorado. Um, I grew up in a big family. I actually have three brothers and sisters um, who joined my family through the foster care program. And I have a sister who joined my family through a faith-based organization. So I've seen how important education is in all kids' lives. And I've also seen uh, the real tragedy when we don't give kids those opportunities. And I think Colorado can step it up and and really improve the learning opportunities for all children around our state. But, but the question was about what kind of constitutional unwinding would be necessary to better fund edu education. What would you call for? So I helped work on the last balanced budget agreement here in Colorado. It had broad bipartisan support, Ref C, in 2005. And that's the kind of agreement we need to reach again going forward so that Colorado can have the type of um, innovative progress and a and sound financial position that we have enjoyed, um, that I have helped work on for many, many years going forward, and that enables our state to keep up with the demands of a growing economy. It's not just schools, but, you know, our streets are crowded, our highways are crowded, our schools are crowded. Um, we have infrastructure that we need to modernize to support economic development in rural Colorado, things like broadband. So I'm encouraged to see Republicans and Democrats working together today at the Capitol. And I think we will go forward with a balanced budget agreement. Broadly speaking, uh do we need to accomplish this by raising more revenue or by cutting spending elsewhere? Do you see fatty parts of the budget? We need to invest more in education. We need to modernize our education system and modernize how we pay for it. We also need to modernize aging infrastructure to make sure we keep Colorado this place that we love in the face of growth. So we can look at both. Of course, you always look first to find efficiencies, but I have a track record of coming up with innovative, um, options to address local challenges that doesn't require raising taxes. So for example, um, the Building Excellent Schools Today program when I was state treasurer, um, rural communities, poor communities have a real challenge 
paying for modernizing their school buildings, aging, crumbling school buildings around the state that couldn't be renovated. And I developed a program that's put a billion dollars renovating hundreds of school buildings and communities all across Colorado. It didn't require any new state taxes. Can you name an issue where you and Governor Hickenlooper part ways? You know, I, um, I have real um, uh, praise for the governor, particularly in the area of economic development. I've helped work on a lot of the large economic development deals here in the Front Range. And uh, Governor Hickenlooper has been tremendous at bringing the companies of tomorrow here to Colorado. But any significant divergence between the two of you on a major issue? I'll probably focus more on public education. I want the kids who are growing up here in Colorado to be able to compete for those great jobs that we're bringing. I worry that these companies have to go out of state to hire the talent to fill those high paying jobs. And I wanna make sure our kids growing up here have the foundational skills and the employ employment skills in order to compete for those jobs. A couple of quick questions here. What grade would you give our state for its implementation of legal recreational marijuana? Oh, I think Colorado has done a very good job. Um, you know, I'd probably give us an A minus. Would you sign off on the execution of Nathan Dunlap? Um, I personally do not believe in the death penalty. However, if I'm serving as governor, um, I will uphold the law. The death penalty is the law here in Colorado. And that allows for a gubernatorial review if it's requested. And in the case of Nathan Dunlap, it has been. So I'll go into that office. I will review that case. Um, I will implement and uphold the jury verdict if that's what the situation warrants, but I'll do my due diligence and I'll go in and take a look at that review before making a decision. But you would not allow your personal opposition to the death penalty to be the reason why you would not carry out that jury verdict? No, no, okay. as governor, I'm not above the law. I would follow the law, but I would support um, if the General Assembly passed legislation to outlaw the death penalty in Colorado, I would sign it. Lastly, let me ask you, if elected, you would be Colorado's first female governor. Yes. What is the proper role of gender in this campaign and in the conversation that we're about to have? I think there's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm about the idea of electing women into leadership positions. That's in the private sector, it's in the public sector, and certainly here in Colorado, you know, we've been a state for over 140 years. We've never had a woman governor, never had a woman U.S. senator, never had a woman mayor of Denver. So there's a lot of excitement around that idea. Um, I hope that people support my candidacy because I'm the best candidate for this job, not because of my gender. Kerry Kennedy, the newest in the field of Democrats looking to be Colorado's next governor. Thank you so much for stopping by. I look forward to having you back. Appreciate it.